So, as you might have heard, there was actually a debate that took place last night between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. And the consensus seems to be that uh, Trump did not win, to put it charitably. Uh, but let me rephrase it. Trump got his cheeks clapped by Kamala Harris last night. It was brutal. She was ruthless. And he said things that made him look like a buffoon, which, you know, that's what we come to expect. But he somehow made himself look dumber than usual, which is actually almost impressive. But nonetheless, seems like the reception is uh, overwhelmingly in favor of Kamala Harris. But let me show you what I mean. This Washington Post focus group of 24 undecided swing voters overwhelmingly thought that Kamala Harris performed better. There were just two that delusionally thought that Trump won. Now, this snap poll from CNN and S. SSRS found, again, that voters overwhelmingly thought that Kamala Harris won the debate. Now, to put that into perspective for you, Donald Trump's numbers were nearly as bad as Joe Biden's June debate numbers. And let me remind you, Biden is no longer running because of that debate. So this was a disaster for Donald Trump. Now, this YouGov snap poll wasn't as charitable to Kamala Harris as voters in the CNN poll, but I mean, it was far more harsh to Donald Trump. There were a lot of people who weren't sure, but nonetheless, not great for Trump. Now, let's look at some anecdotes because Zach from the Vanguard shared a tweet from his dad, who is a lifelong Republican, and he actually thinks that Kamala looked presidential and felt like Trump couldn't get out of the way of his own ego. Now, on top of that, Republican pollster Frank Lutz tweeted that his mentions were being flooded by Trump supporters complaining about the debate, indicating that they know he's losing. Now, they were all complaining about the moderators, but we'll get to that. Now, perhaps the most telling is this tweet from Tim Miller, who says that Lindsey Graham told him in the spin room that Trump's debate team should be fired and called it a, quote, disaster. Now, Chris Christie basically echoed the same sentiment, but what I find hilarious about all of this is that it was widely reported that Tulsi Gabbard actually helped Donald Trump prepare for this debate, and that's significant because back when she was still LARPing as a Democrat during the 2020 Democratic Party primaries, she did fairly well against Kamala Harris, and Kamala Harris didn't really know how to respond, so Tulsi thought that she could help Trump recreate the magic, but it turns out um, she couldn't do that, so... Good job, Tulsi. You're crushing it. Now, let's go to some uh, additional anecdotes. This is uh, some responses from voters as well as a focus group. There are people who understand the importance of this election, and there's people who want to just play, you know, keyboard warriors and making a fuss and, and really saying heinous things about other people. I, so that's Trump, the bully. And I think Kamala Harris came out showing some decorum and some presidential... Uh, nature about her. So I think we're, the door's a little bit open. But it also sounds like this debate cemented for you that you will never vote for former President Trump, at least again. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that people want to separate um, policy from character, and I just don't see how you can do that. I can't get behind somebody who maybe I agree with certain policies on, but their character is atrocious and lacks complete leadership. Who do you think won by show of hands? Former President Trump. Two, I'll give it four, but tentative. Two over there. What about Vice President Harris? More hands. For those of you who thought this debate could be determinative, how many of you have made up your minds based on what you saw tonight on stage in Philadelphia? Raise your hands. So anecdotally, it seems like this debate might have actually swayed some Republicans to vote for Kamala Harris. At least that first guy said that he's open to it. Now, listen, there's really no way to objectively gauge who won the debate until we see at least a couple of polls. Having said that, though, there is one way to impartially measure who won the debate. As Republican Mike Collins puts it, you want to know who won? Find out who refuses a second debate. And I do agree with that because that is one way that we can gauge how well the candidates did immediately. So with that being said, what are the camps saying? Do they want to debate? Well, Kamala Harris's team immediately said they want to do a second debate. So that's good. Now, uh, as for Trump, I'll just let you hear what he has to say about the prospect of a second debate with Kamala Harris. She wants a second debate. What's it's your answer? She lost. She wants it because she lost. Do you have an answer? Well, I don't know. I have to think about it. But if you won the debate, I sort of think maybe I shouldn't do it. Why should I do another debate? 
she immediately said, we want another do it. That's, you know what happens when you're a prize fighter and you lose? You immediately want a new fight. You want a rematch. You want a rematch. The guy that won is sort of happy and thinking about it. Sure. You definitely won, bud. Very believable. Now, this is not like a boxing match because this is a presidential debate. And the thing about presidential debates is that if you actually think that you won, you would want to do more of them because that's going to help you and hurt your opponent, right? Now, what was that tweet from Mike Collins again? Let's refresh our memories. Quote, you want to know who won? Find out who refuses to do a second debate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, rest assured, Trump definitely thinks he won. Very confident. But here's why he is claiming to be so confident. He has some evidence, apparently. I'm worried that, excuse me, that you uh, took the bait from Kamala Harris tonight. What would you say? debate tonight. This was my best debate. We had a 92% rating in one poll. We had an 86% rating in another. We had 77% in another. We, had, we won every one of the polls that came out tonight, and there were quite a few of them. I love that his response to his worst debate performance ever is that it was actually his best performance ever. He always says the opposite of what's true. I didn't shit the bed. You know, the bed is the cleanest and least shittiest it's ever been, actually. And everybody's saying it. It's just I'm so over his antics. It's so exhausting. But uh, he says that the numbers favor him. Let me show you what he's talking about. So he is literally citing a Newsmax poll, a very, very impartial pollster here, and three Twitter polls <laughs> mostly taken by right-wing accounts. Now, to be fair, one of them was from C-SPAN. Nonetheless, it was still conducted on Twitter. Now, I feel like I shouldn't have to explain this, but if I, as a left-winger, ask my audience to tell me whether or not they support Medicare for all. Just ask yourself this question. Would you be surprised if 98% of them came back and said, yes, we support Medicare for all? Nobody would be surprised by that because my audience supports Medicare for all because I have curated a left-wing and progressive audience, right? That's not indicative of what the general population says. I can't pull my own audience of left-wing people and then say, hey, this is representative of the general population because that would be bullshit. I am polling my audience. So obviously a biased poll conducted with right-wingers on Twitter, which is overrun with conservatives and Nazis, isn't necessarily going to tell us who actually did the best in the debate. But he lost, he knows he lost, and conservatives are indicating without saying it explicitly that they think he lost as well based on their response. So I've made you wait so long. Well, let's get to some Republican cope because, oh my God, their tears were so, so salty. Megan Kelly tweets, how many times has she personally insulted him? We are talking about Donald Trump. Okay, this man insults everybody, including Megan Kelly. So spare me the fucking fake outrage if she just gives him a taste of his own medicine once. But she also said, this was an ambush. <laughs> so she's referring to the moderators. Now we've got uh, Dave Portnoy who says, I don't think this is going well for Trump so far at all. Probably doesn't help that it's a tag team match, but yeah, not great. Hmm, whatever you say, bud. Now, Tommy Loren says, it was a rigged ambush of Donald Trump. Now, she goes on to admit, but he took the bait. He didn't have to. He shouldn't have. So, you know what? There's a point for honesty from Tommy Loren. A bonus one from her. So, she tweeted out, well, Taylor Swift endorsed Kamala. This is not good. Now, this happened right after the debate. So, of course, she was reacting. I had to share that. Okay, Matt Walsh says, Kamala baited Trump by making fun of his rallies. Trump took the bait and got way off message. Yeah, worked like a charm. Uh, ben Shapiro tweets, the moderators are the story of the evening, and it isn't a good story. No, that's not actually the story. The story is Donald Trump. Uh, Charlie Kirk, get this, says, this is not a debate. This is a public show trial where the judge, jury, and executioner is ABC News. Talk about melodramatic but it gets worse he adds did you really think they were going to give trump a fair debate trump got shot on july 13th and now a drive-by shooting on september 10th bro you need to calm down this is so over the top uh and this is my favorite by a mile eric erickson tweeted out you stupid mfers just got trump to repeat your lie about the pets congrats on setting the news stories tomorrow by lying so trump picks it up and says stupid shit oh this is so good this is so fucking good uh megan kelly adds the absolute gall of abc to keep 
quote, fact checking only Trump while letting her lie in every answer is infuriating. Well, I can explain this actually, Megyn Kelly. See, the reason why they were fact checking Donald Trump more than they were Kamala Harris is because he was lying more. In fact, almost every single time he opened his mouth, he lied. He lied about people eating pets. He lied about uh, babies being killed after they were born by Democrats and doctors. He lied every single time he had an opportunity to speak. So if you're lying that much, then it's just a fact of reality that if there's going to be fact checking, he's going to be the one that gets fact checked more. Uh, but that was kind of just like the live cope tweets from influencers. I do want to share some responses from Fox News people, namely surrogates like Vivek Ramaswamy, Laura Trump, because what they say is interesting because they're not going to say that Kamala Harris actually won, but they will say that she didn't do as bad as they expected her to do. Translation, mm, she kind of killed it, but let's watch. You watch the debate, let's get your overall view. Yeah, I mean, it was three on one. It was sort of what we expected. Kamala Harris got up there, she lied. She brought up Project 2025, not just once, but multiple times, knowing full well that's something Donald Trump has disavowed. He says, I had nothing to do with it. You know, I'm always gonna give it to you straight. So a few things I would say is, did she exceed the very low expectations that were set for her? Yes, she did. Translation. They were actually very impressed with Kamala Harris's performance, but they can't admit that because they are hacks. Now, listen, for myself, I I come from a left-wing perspective. I don't hide that, obviously. But when it comes to me trying to analyze these debates, I do my very best to remove myself from my own biases so I could try to gauge how the average political consumer who isn't always thinking and talking about this would respond to that debate, right? I try to be objective. And so if you hear my breakdowns of debates, oftentimes I'll say the Republican one, oftentimes I'll say the Democrat one. Back in 2020, I was supporting Bernie Sanders, and there were a couple of times where I thought he lost debates or didn't perform as well as he should have performed. I criticized him. Just, just this last June debate, I said that Biden lost. I mean, I feel like that would be absurd to say that he didn't lose. But the point is that you can... You can have a bias, but then admit when it comes to debates and just pure performance that somebody you like lost, but they can't do that. They're incapable of being neutral even. And it's just, it's really sad. It's embarrassing because they're kind of proving that politics is just a team sport to them. They don't care about anything, but their side looking good. But I mean, who's going to trust you because you're just going to say what you think they want to hear. That's embarrassing, right? I'm honest. You might disagree with me. I might lose subscribers because I say something that pisses off my audience, but at least I'm honest. You know that. You can expect honesty from me. From these people, you know what to expect, right? Now, one thing that I got to point out is Laura Trump. So she was talking about Project 2025 and how dishonest it was for Kamala Harris to tie Trump to this because he distanced himself from it and says that he doesn't know anything about it. I just love that they keep using this line after Donald Trump implemented 64% of the policy recommendations from the Heritage Foundation the first time that he was president. But it's apparently uh, bad to not believe Trump when he says he doesn't know anything about Project 2025. And you're a liar if you say that he is linked to Project 2025. In other words, we're supposed to believe the guy who on that very debate stage claimed migrants were eating cats and dogs. We're supposed to believe him when he says he knows nothing about Project 2025. Yeah, no thank you. Uh, I will look at the evidence and I'll look at the fact that his Agenda 47 platform has a lot of similarities to Project 2025, his long-term relationship with the Heritage Foundation, and I'll uh, make my own determination. And that determination, objectively speaking, is that, yeah, he is very close to Project 2025, and I think he would do a lot of it. But I do want to move on because I think that Fox News pundits, just the pundits, not like the surrogates for the campaign, they were actually dare I say, refreshingly honest. Now, you could tell they hate Kamala Harris and it pains them to admit this, but at least they admitted that Trump lost. This is a different person who was well-prepped, well-prepared, had answers, not and knew where she was going. Not only a different person from the person she was in that interview on CNN, but a different person from the absolute dunderhead uh, so many of us thought she was during her conduct as vice president when she would come out with these ludicrous statements and started nowhere and it ended in midair. Unburdened uh, un by the past. Un yeah, unburdened by common sense. And, and here she was tonight. She was composed. She was prepared. She kept her cool. She saw advantages. She took them. She baited him successfully, which is the 
story of the debate, in my view. Um, so she came out ahead in this, in my opinion, uh, no doubt. Now, now, whether it'll move the needle in the race, very few things seem to, but, but, um, but that remains to be seen. I agree with Brett. Uh, this what has to be thought of by supporters of Donald Trump uh, and people in that campaign is a disappointment. June 27th, we talked about before, was a different kind of collapse for Joe Biden. In some ways, this has to be thought of as, as a collapse in some ways. I got reaction from Republican friends. The two common things were train wreck, and he needs this to end. Look, I don't like to give Fox News credit for anything, but I do have to give them credit for being honest. At least they're not trying to fabricate some bullshit about the moderators who are just so biased against Donald Trump. I think that Sean Hannity tried to do that, if I'm remembering correctly. But even if the moderators are as biased as they say they are, which they're not, I actually think that they were very good. Uh, but even if that's the case, a skilled order is going to be able to shine in that predicament because it will prove that when his back is against the wall, he is able to overcome that challenge. But they know that Trump is in cognitive decline. He's not you know, who he was back in 2016 or even 2020. And so any little obstacle that comes his way could really fuck him up and cause him the face plant. And uh, they thought that it was the moderators. I think it was Donald Trump. I think it was Kamala Harris, who was very effective at baiting him. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Tree, tree, tree. Tree. <laughs> tree. Tree. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs>